What is up guys, we doubles back again with a brand new video. Today I'm going to be showing you my Berserker build that's completely countering the meta. If you're sick of getting knocked up, this is the class for you. Absolutely massive damage and absolutely immune to most of the CC out there right now. So I hope you guys enjoy, let's jump right in. <laughs> So one of the things I realized about Lost Ark in PvP is that it can be a very frustrating game. A lot of people are bowing out of it and they're just relegating themselves to just the PvE, just the Chaos and Abyss dungeon grind, right? Which is fine, it's good, but there is something to be said about good PvP where you actually have a chance to uh, do something that genuinely makes you think, that genuinely makes you, you know, strain yourself in some kind of way, that makes you grow as a person. I mean, maybe I'm glorifying it to some degree, but that's what PvP tends to do for a lot of the people that actually like it. But a lot of those people, and even some of those who would like to be that kind of person but simply can't get into it, are having an issue enjoying PvP in Lost Ark. That's what brought me, my friends, to the Berserker class. The tier lists out there, what you're seeing are typically kind of garbage. They're garbage for quite a few reasons, and this is something that nobody ever gets right. Number one, the efficacy of a class will change significantly based on the skill of the individual that plays it. And even then, if you look at the tier lists as a literal list of the best classes if played at peak potential, I still think most of them are wrong. So for example, a lot of them don't put striker very high, but a guy that's actually really good at striker can beat plenty of the S tier classes if they are equal skill. So what does that have to say? Is Striker S tier? Well, no. In many ways, it's still not because we're talking 1v1. We're also talking the literal epitome of skill. And uh, yeah, it varies. So what am I trying to get at here? Well, in most tier lists, you'll see Berserker probably B tier, maybe low A tier. That's my guess, right? Uh, from what I'm trying to remember from the few lists of people I've seen across YouTube and on different websites. But Berserker has some something going for it that a lot of other classes simply don't and that is that it is wholly push immune right you can design this class to be push immune which means most of the time taking away when somebody is absolutely incredible with one of the absolute best classes like Deathblade, gunslinger sorcerer or even striker if it's solely a 1v1 situation i think berserker a lot of the time will steal you wins and will prevent you from having to be in those situations where you simply cannot play your character it's a slower class to play it does take timing to be good at this class but i do think this is the anti-meta so we're talking pvp and not only pvp but we're talking Talking specifically team elimination so I've played a few matches today we've got five wins real quick and I've noticed that the best way to play berserker as I alluded to was to take all of the push immunity spells if you look at my maelstrom and my finish strike and my sword storm they all have tenacity on them which is giving them push immunity and that's going to mean I can basically always get them off so what this is going to basically equate is timing it's going to equate to me needing good timing if I have the right timing timing and I use the abilities at the perfect moment, they will always go off, they will always CC my target right back, and you will be able to counter any of their transgressions. When these things are on cooldown, you need to take your distance, you need to run away, you need to, you know, create a gap. That is something you really need to keep in mind. But if we're talking a solid Berserker core, I would definitely have to put Sword Storm, Final Strike, and Maelstrom, which by the way, you do not see Maelstrom in a lot of the guides out there, but I would put it on the list. Why? Because I think in most matchups, at most skill levels, this is going to really get you wins that you probably don't deserve. We've also got the Red Dust in there. This is really, really interesting. 30% increased damage. Now, I didn't put these on random keybinds. To me, this is the optimal order. If you land a sword storm you have just enough time to red dust and to land the finish strike on the currently knocked down foe the finish strike is then massive damage it combos into even more damage and then you can follow it up with a maelstrom but they typically roll by then so if you aim properly you can then do another ability you do not see a lot on guides for this class in pvp and that is crime hazard which we'll be able to look at when we show some matches as well this knocks people in the air and does pretty decent damage as well now i've also took the mountain crash this 
is something you definitely see in guides. This is 40% reduced movement speed and 20% reduced attack speed with an earthquake effect, which is going to be, a, it's kind of like a stagger effect to try to explain it. Uh, so that's pretty good. And then we've got the Hellblade, which is something you also don't see as much, but it's an eight meter leap if you talent it properly, exactly as you see right here. And uh, if you take the fire element, it has no hold down time. So this is an instant gap closer with a lot of damage and a knockdown effect uh, or stagger effect, right? Very, very good. And then lastly, I took Diving Slash and I've been playing around with the different mobilities. You know, you could take Shoulder Charge with Chain Charge. You could take the Shield if you want to get two shields off. There's a bunch of things you could do. A lot of people take Tempest Slash. A lot of people go for things like Wind Blade even, right? So I'm only mentioning these as alternatives in case you want to mix it up because I think that as long as you take this QWER core right here, you're basically fine and I would still personally take the Mountain Crash. But really my one, three, and four can be interchanged. I took the Diving Slash because it's very, very similar. It's like a second Hellblade, right? A little less, um, you know, good compared to Hellblade, but it still gets the job done. It's a pretty nice way to close the gap. Lastly, I take Chain of Vengeance, and I take Chain of Vengeance because it's the easiest one to use. The other ultimate for a Berserker simply has too much charge time required to get off. So this is a hold down effect. The longer you hold the skill down, the more damage it does in a line. It also becomes, from what I've seen, harder to control exactly where it goes the longer you hold it down. And so yeah, you could CC somebody and get a tier two charge off on this for good damage, but a lot of the times it's still just weaker than using Chain of Vengeance, which essentially does damage and then pulls everybody towards you and does even more damage. It's just adding to your CC chain. Really, you only have to land one Sword Storm or one Finish Strike uh, or one Maelstrom and you can easily land the Chain of Vengeance. It's a pretty easy thing to do, but you will see some clips where I pull out the Berserk Fury for the memes, one-shotting people damn near from really crazy distances, and so we'll look at that as well. But my friends, the way to counter the meta is certainly the Sword Storm, Red Dust, Finish Strike, Maelstrom combo with the Crime Hazard. It's just fun. Now listen, lots of things just beat Berserker, but a lot of people who don't know how to play are going to get clapped from Berserkers because one of the things Berserker has going for it is that all of its spells seem to have really, really high amounts of damage tied to them. You'll notice that the reason for that is because theoretically speaking, if you have bad timing, for example, all of a Berserker's spells should be incredibly easy to dodge, okay? So yeah, that's what I'm saying. If somebody is top tier, you're going to have a hard time as Berserker, and that's why in most tier lists you see them kind of low uh, to begin with. But if somebody is not quite a master of their class, which most people should not be, Berserker is 100% anti-meta and a really good thing to learn um, just because it's a lot of fun, has a lot of good CC, and it's really an FU class. It's like, oh, you came in here with your Stork, your Striker or whatever, and you wanted the Perma CC me, your Gunslinger. Well, uh, yeah, if I land one attack, you're not getting off the ground. Round, okay, so I want to show you guys some PvP with the counter meta class. I think it's a whole lot of fun. Let's jump into it, right?
And that was my first 1v3 day one playing the Berserker, right? So you could see the build slightly different from the final one that I went ahead and gave you guys at the beginning of the video. Uh, but nonetheless, very, very similar. You can see my damage right here. Absolutely ridiculous at 380,000 damage. And I'm not going to lie. A pally should be able to beat me. I beat Berserkers. And whenever I fight a Berserker on my pally, I always think it's a free win. So you know what? There was definitely a skill gap there. But you could see the anti-meta because... A a lot of the times I was getting by simply by prioritizing the push immunity at the precise moment that I assume that my opponent is going to attempt to counter attack me. And now there is some mind games there. You do need to kind of know that if your opponent's coming towards you, that they're probably trying to F you up and you should probably go push immune, but that's not too difficult. I also had two grade 17s on my team here. It was definitely a lopsided matchup, but it didn't end up mattering, right? That's how good the Berserker can be in this meta. So I want to take a second and just analyze a match I had. I did fairly well in this match, but there's no way I'm going to become better if I just rage at my keyboard uh, at every matchup that's not good for me and don't just start paying attention to my matches and where I lost. So I start off this one elimination match against a Deathblade and I'm just completely hammering her. I'm doing my push immune. There's a lot of pushback and stagger effects on the Deathblade that I'm basically going through, but I notice that I basically basically play myself here. So that's something to keep in mind. I am consistently throughout this match basically controlling my opponent. However, I'm making consistent mistakes where I am too aggressive. And I think the best way to play Berserker is reactive. I think you need to pay attention to what your opponent is doing a little bit more than almost you're thinking about what you're supposed to be doing next. Because what you do next entirely relies on what your opponent is doing at that precise moment. I think most classes could probably benefit from a play style like that. I think that's how pros tend to play. But in this match, I just particularly noticed I was jumping into CC too much. I was making a big mistake. So I lost a lot more health than I probably should have going 65% in into this striker matchup now striker is something i glorify quite a lot that's because in my opinion a good striker is one of the ultimate 1v1 classes and that's because they can keep you cc the entire time theoretically that means i should be quite good against them and as you can see i start this match off right into a beautiful ultimate and damn near destroy this guy and easily turn it into a ko only losing about 25 percent of my health to get him to one percent and then i win now I go into a pally matchup with 50% of my health. And let me just point out that striker was not good because a good striker is in and out, in and out, in and out, and easily dodging all of my stuff. So that's not a very good you know, interpretation. So I'm thinking I just slaughtered two people. I'm going to slaughter this guy too. He went into this though as exactly how I would have gone into it on my pally, which is frustrating because most people, especially when they're new, they run away too much. They have no idea what's happening. But if you're proactive, it can be very difficult. And pally is very, very good when it's proactive. So you can see he does not let me have any time once I miss something to regenerate my cooldowns. And that's something a lot of people mess up on. You can't miss your stuff with Berserker because your cooldowns are long and you might not have the time if you have a guy like this who sits on you the entire time and then runs away with superior mobility right you can't wait for cooldowns because he picks the fight so i think the way i beat this guy is cool my ego down a bit and just start reacting once again because notice how i jump in there why what was the point of that right it wasn't gonna hit but i think i was frustrated and so i let him beat me by just being bad in other words he earned it now, I wanted to point this match out for a specific reason, and that is that despite the fact that I 1v2'd, I wasn't really an amazing player in this particular match. It was good practice. It's nice to have it under my belt. It's a bit of a confidence boost, but was it truly good? In the Deathblade matchup, you guys saw I ran into CC. I probably lost about 30% more health than I should have if I only played to my strengths and got rid of my weaknesses, right? Now, in the Striker matchup, I did dominate that guy. I think I did basically play it right. I also think he didn't play it right, but that's beside the point. It wasn't a difficult matchup, but it was pretty good. Only about 10%, maybe 15% of my health lost in that fight. However, in the Paladin matchup, that's where my ego went astray. 
I simply did not play properly. I did not play reactive because I should beat him if I play reactive uh, because he by default gets to play on the offense. His class is better at that in the 1v1 scenario because his mobility is superior to mine and he has a lot of push immunity just like me. Not as much as me though, but he does have it if he builds properly. He also has a lot of shields and stuff. So if I can burst him for a split second, you know, he is not going to be punished by that as badly as a lot of other classes. He has damage reduction on the heavenly blessings this is a class i genuinely understand right i've played a lot of this one and i know that i don't lose to berserkers often however i think i've just learned something today which is that if i play against a berserker who is reactive i think i i could possibly give, be given a run for my money right and i've really got to think about that how do you beat a guy who is 100 expecting everything you're going to do it's easy to beat somebody who doesn't expect it essentially this pally he goes on a tear he takes a striker on which is a soft Solid matchup and then this guy decides to pray at the beginning of the match man it's a tier one gunslinger though and uh the likelihood of him being new to the class is probably low considering the mog he goes in there and he proceeds to do with what gunslingers do right in the 1v1s he perma cc's this guy um with superior mobility that's just it so he goes in there for the strike there with a the dash slash immediately gets dodged on immediately starts popping things because he's he can't do anything else he uses his charge there he gets dodged through and uh he misses his aoe once again he can't touch this guy look at the cooldowns he's waiting on charge right now he has no heavenly blessings he dash slashes it's really hard to land on somebody with a million ways to dash he gets slaughtered okay and this is really just a good example of gunslinger power because a bad gunslinger thinks they're supposed to have a lot of damage and gets wrecked a good gunslinger just keeps their distance the entire game and perma ccs you and wrecks but we still got max damage in this match best battlefield score 2v1 as well i thought it was an interesting one to point out because i really think it showcases that berserker can look bad it can also look good and not actually be good and i think we did all of that in those matches while also simultaneously displaying the strength of the zerker which is the ridiculous push immunity and incredibly high damage image. All right, I want to end this video by just jumping into a team elimination match myself with this final version of the build and just commentating myself through it, which does add a little bit of difficulty to it, but we're going to do it anyway and just see how we do. I really do want to help some of you guys out there because I know that people, including myself, although I do it more behind the scenes, can be so negative about the PvP in this game because it is frustrating and it also kind of hurts you to your soul when you get clapped because most people are so toxic, man. Like, even, even if it's just for fun and and I'm guilty of it as well. We all are. It can just feel so bad if you're not personally in the right frame of mind. So I got to get you guys there. And the way to do it is by countering the meta so that you don't have to care, right? You just play and you dominate. That's the goal. All right, we're in. And apparently I'm a key player. Um, I don't think that's that much damage. I Sometimes I feel like they show things that aren't particularly good. I'm going to try to go first, though. The enemy team is, uh, I'm only seeing a gunslinger as something that I'm scared of. If they're good, I probably do lose in the first round. But then we're seeing Pally Shadowhunter, which are pretty much 50-50 skill-based matchups in most skill brackets from my experience. So, we'll see how we can do. As you guys know, up against Shadowhunter first, I'm happy with a 1v2. I'm not happy with a 1v1 and a half. I'm not even happy with just beating my opponent. It needs to be a 1v2. Um, that's where I'm feeling like I, I did enough right there. I can guarantee the win. So let's see what we can do. Keeping in mind the reactive play style that I mentioned might be best, right? Okay. Got her. Got her. There it is. Can I get you with that? Yep. Get, come on. Yes. She's coming back. It's fine. She'll come towards me here, and I'm going to queue. She might throw her Draven stuff at me. Yep. There it is. Told you I had the time. We can mails from there. Oh, my God. Just completely just taken, man. I think I took a little too much damage in the beginning. There it is. Uh-oh. I took a hit, and it was a good one. That's basically the one you don't want to take, by the way. You never want to take a holy sword. That is literally as bad as it gets. He's coming. I set up the attack. He's coming again. I set up another attack. I could have gone in there. We can do that. He's slowed. We can do that. He takes more damage. He'll come in. He'll come in. He's pissed. 
Nice. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hellblade? No. Oh, no. Okay. So he has a big shield, so he's going to come in. Oh, nice. He has electrocute on that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Keep him down. Execute him. He missed the uh, holy sword again. Maelstrom. Oh, no. Do I lose? Oh, do I lose? Oh, he electrocuted me again. He missed the holy sword. This is crazy. Oh, I got him. Just barely, bro. That dude is grade 17, but he's off to a good start. That guy is going to be pretty good. Oh, I'm so happy. Now, I do always forget to use this, so let's just go for it. Right here. That's like uh, my ulti thing, the class-based thing. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and this should have been an easy kill. I had one HP, and uh, they have uh, amazing mobility, so she only had to time it to dodge one thing and uh, become immune to it and get out of it and kill me. So I, I give her the props. If my tier 1 pally and my other gunslinger don't kill this person, though, I'm going to be really sad. Sometimes when I get the 1v2, I think, now i got to do at least half of the third guy's health to guarantee the win. Now, I've talked about this before. The 1v2 is much harder than the 2v1, and, and this is what I mean. So, I killed two people, but I ulted, and it was one ult. Now, this person, this gunslinger, has to fight both of my allies, both of which have an ult. So the difference is the amount of ults used on the one person left in this 1v2 or 2v1 scenario. So what I'm trying to say is there is no logical way or reason why this gunslinger should win, right? Zero. Because if they both ult and don't miss it, it should be enough to kill this person ultimately if they land literally anything else. So this guy has the, the you know, the shield. So this is like really hard to land you're not going to get the damage off unfortunately often but you're going to always guarantee the massive 40 percent of your max hp shield that's what a lot of these pallies are using it for he lands the holy sword he knocks her up gets frozen very very good right there heavenly judgment and he goes into the wrath of god this is it man executor strike Execution of Justice is up soon. He misses the ult. It's exactly what I said would happen. There's no way he's not. But he has the shield. And he wants to guarantee that he wins. And so I think that was the right play. And you can see what I mean now, right? Like, even if he loses, which he didn't. Good job, dude. Uh, the other guy has ult, man. The other guy. And this gunslinger didn't even ult by the end of the fight. So I don't know. It was a little weird. But I'll definitely take the 1v2. And uh, yeah, we played reactive essentially the entire time. We had the most damage there, of course, the most damage taken, but we fought the most opponents, singularly speaking. Uh, I'll take it, 120 battlefield score. All right, there's another 1v3. I just completely forgot to record it, sadly, but 423,000 damage, and we went 3-0, so there's the proof right there. It was against Striker, Slinger, and Lancer, and the Gun Lancer matchup, by the way, is a complete domination matchup, so there you go. The Zerker is certainly capable of the 1v3s.
And there we go. There's another 1v3. Actually, this one just happened after the last one I forgot to record. I'm glad this time I thought, hey, what if you do good? You should probably be recording right now. So I'll take it. Another one. Berserker can be very good, guys. I'm telling you. So, okay, guys, learning along the way, and I know that my mindset, since I'm human and you're human, is probably very similar to the ones that you have, the thoughts that you have, the situations and emotions that you have as you learn this game as well. So whenever I can figure something out that made my life more fun and bearable, I want to pass it along to you guys so that you can hopefully, you know, speed through my thought process and easily surplant me very, very quick, quicker than I had to go through it. I mean, that's the whole point of teaching people things, right? So that's the Berserker. I think it's a really good class i think if you do exactly what i said and you take all of the push immune abilities here and then you take basically i mean i'm sure there's an optimal as i am attempting to create but if you take basically anything else that makes you happy on top of all the push immunity and cc based and timing based abilities i think you're going to see yourself in a very similar situation to me this class is a whole lot of fun but if you guys enjoyed this video and this berserker build make sure to give the video a like and to subscribe, but I'll see you guys in the next one. McDouble's out.